Hey, what's up, guys? Time for another comic book review, and today's review is going to be of Forever Evil, number six, the penultimate issue of this event. We open up the comic with Batman and the Injustice League and Lex Luthor basically planning to get into the Watchtower, the fallen Watchtower that the, the crime syndicate has taken over, and Batman is trying to take control, but Lex Luthor's like, ha ha, no, I'm the boss. You need to fall in line because we outnumber you big time. And Batman is struggling with that because he's usually the, the, the leader and he's not in this. Even Catwoman, who is supposed to be Batman's ally, is basically telling him to shut the fuck up and listen to them. We flick over to the crime syndicate who are talking about how to close this fissure we saw in the last issue. And the only way to close it apparently is Firestorm killing someone, taking the life energy and closing this fissure that they're enemy can't get through the multiverse. As they're talking about this, Alfred from World 3 contacts Owlman saying that he needs to get back to the Watchtower because Ultraman has done something to, well, Grid on the orders of Ultraman has done something to, to Nightwing and we need to come back right now. We quickly flick back over to the Injustice League talking about how to get into the Watchtower and Batman has a back door into it, basically, and he shouldn't. Because if he did, he would play, he's planning on taking down the Justice League. And he always does, because Batman always has a plan. I really like the dialogue in this, this comic, basically showing Batman he's a bitch. So we get into the... Watchtower and Grid is talking, there's Bubbles talking over the Injustice League going into the room and how Ultraman told him to do this. So we get this right here, the murder machine that Nightwing is in. And we also get an explanation that everyone now has found out that there is another member of the crime syndicate or another person in their base that isn't possibly someone that they haven't met yet, which is the bagged, bagged, head bag guy. So we continue on and evil Alfred is going to try to get Nightwing out and right as he goes in, shank, Black Manta murders him to just straight up, straight up murders him. And he goes down. That's death number one. As we continue on, they find this hooded man and Nightwing and Batman have a conversation about basically let's let it just go. I'm not going to get out of here, Bruce. He calls him Bruce, which I thought was weird because everyone else is in the room, but maybe they're just really close so no one could hear. But anyway, we continue on going and Sinestro says there's people incoming. We we need we need to get out of here or just, we need to defuse this bomb right now. And the crime syndicate comes, crime syndicate comes busting in and it Fight ensues between everybody. Stuff is going on. They need they're trying to get out of the room, but they can't because it's built to house doomsday. So the walls are invulnerable, basically. But they need to get Nightwing out of this bomb. So Batman keeps trying to un, un, unhook him, but every time he disarms something, it just reattaches to Nightwing's chest, which is in his heart, and it's reattaching to his heart. The only way to disarm the bomb is to stop Nightwing's heart. And in this, right now, we get the next panel of Manta and Captain Cold, or Captain Cold, I think his name is, uh, taking the bag off of the person's face. And they take off this tape that is around him, and the crime scene starts, starts freaking out, trying to get to him. And as they're talking, still Nightwing says, tell, tell, keeps telling him to leave, leave, we're not going to be able to do this. But this right here is the coolest thing, death number two basically, is Batman gets taken out by Lex Luthor and Catwoman tries to stop him but it doesn't work. Lex Luthor says he's making an executive decision, puts his mouth, his hand over Dick's mouth. And we get a little back to the battle and this Captain Cold and the Johnny Quick are fighting and there's Captain Cold basically tells him that him and the Flash have an understanding and it's a respect between them that we don't have. And he calls his gun a cold gun, but calls it a freeze gun. And Captain Cold's like, no, it's a cold gun. I'm the one that's mastered absolute cold. And he uses an auto voice automated thing. 
and basically freezes Johnny Quick's leg right off and kicks it and shatters it so he's not able to run anymore. And basically, this there's two things that shocked me was when Luther had his fate hand over Nightwing's face, Batman says this. I'll read it to you. Luther, you hurt him. I will kill you. And that's really cool. Because, like, Batman doesn't kill people. And if he's protecting Nightwing, he will kill someone. And that, to me, is just, like, super cool. Like, he will break his rule for us. His, basically, his, basically his son. And as they're fighting, their crime scene is telling the Injustice League to put that thing back over his face. The, that this guy's dangerous. And right as he tries to put it back on, this other person says, Makuzaka, Mazaka, Mazaka, Muzaka, whatever the hell that is. I think it's Shazam backwards. I'm pretty sure it's Shazam backwards. And as this happens, I think Luther stops Nightwing's heart, and this lightning bolt hits this mysterious person. And the crime syndicate says the prisoner is free, everything goes crazy. Uh, Batman's gonna beat the shit out of Luther. Johnny Quick is down, and this guy who is this magic person breaks Johnny Quick's neck, killing him effectively, taking that second death now. That's the only death. And third death, technically, if Nightwing is dead. We're not sure if Nightwing's dead, because Luther kind of says that he might not be dead. And we end it with this, basically, this panel right here. Your power, I'll read it to you. I'm going to kill every single one of you, and Alexander Luther shall be the most powerful hero the world has ever seen. And that is so cool, that this is Lex Luthor, and he's the Shazam of World 3. And I would get, I would definitely, people saying that not, this isn't that good of a book, I'm really enjoying it, and those, that, those four specific parts were really good for me. So I would give this a 8.5 out of 10, and I would recommend you picking it up because there's some cool dialogue and epicness. That's about it. I'm the Comic Addict. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe all of my videos because I'm cool. And that's about it. Peace.